Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Give him some praise in this place. Let him know you love him. Come on. How many of y'all believe that he truly is our champion? He is our deliverer. Come on. He is our savior. He is the one we came to church for this morning. We come to magnify. We come to worship and lift up the name of Jesus. Can somebody go ahead and give him a praise offering right now? Let him know you love him. Thank you, Lord. If you can testify to the goodness of God, make some noise in this place. Come on, let's get holy in this house. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Come on, who can testify to the goodness of God? Come on, who can make a, a, a voice, a shout of triumph unto the Lord, letting him know that he is the one who gives you victory? Come on, somebody. Can anybody get a little radical in the house this morning? Come on. Oh, don't tell me you didn't bust a move when you heard your favorite song. Come on. But how many guys know you busted a move because you felt something in, in a beat or a lyric? But we ought to be able to give some praise to the one who set us free, delivered us. Come on, somebody. And has given us eternal life. And his name is Jesus. Amen. How many of y'all truly believe he's good? Come on, somebody say, God is good. God is good. Tell your neighbor, say, hey, God is good. God is good. Amen. Tell them, God is good all the, time. all the time. Come on, high five somebody. Say, I'm glad you're in church this morning. Come on. And y'all find a seat. Y'all make some noise for our worship team. My goodness, God is so good. Amen. We're so grateful. We're thankful. Come on, man. How many of y'all just felt like God was just moving on that? Amen. I don't know. I came to have some church. Amen. Y'all go ahead and say real quickly, say, I'm okay. My pastor's crazy. It's all right. But I'm crazy about Jesus. Can I get an amen? Somebody say, he's crazy about Jesus. Come on. Tell your neighbor. Say, he's crazy about Jesus. Come on. Amen. I ain't got no apologies. Come on, somebody. Amen. No apologies. No apologies for it. Amen. Some people look at you like, man, you're, you're a little, little radical about Jesus, man. You need to just calm down a little bit. Can I tell you something? Listen to me. If you, you don't get your praise on down here, you don't get your praise on up there. And, and I, Becky's right. When angels, when angels says holy, they all start saying holy. And I promise you, a, 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 a praise break goes out up in heaven. They begin to praise God singing holy, 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 holy. And it goes on and on and on and on and on and on praising the King of kings and Lord of lords. And I want you to know there is a time to where you're going to just have, you got to get quiet and listen to that still small voice and you just worship God. But then there's other times, how many of you guys know where we can get a little loud? Get a little louder? Tell your neighbor you can get a little louder. Can I tell your neighbor you can go ahead and get a little louder? Sometimes you got to get a little louder. Why? Because you got to drown out that negative voice. Come on, somebody. With a hallelujah. Can I get an amen? And you need to allow your mind, come on, somebody in your body, you got to get it in check, sometimes even your heart, and let them know that there's somebody who's greater than anything else that I'm dealing with in life, and his name is Jesus. Can I get an amen? Somebody say Jesus. Let's go ahead and make the devil mad. Amen. Come on, somebody. I know we say that, but the truth is scripturally and biblically, the Bible does say that demons tremble at the name of Jesus. And so I'm not ashamed of the name of Jesus. Tell your neighbor, I'm not ashamed of the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm not. God has just been too good to me. Tell your neighbor, God's been too good to me. He has. God has just been so good to me. I'm telling you time and time again. God is just way too good to me. Amen. Amen. Love you, Lord. Just making sure there's anything else the Lord wants to do. Amen. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. I, I just want to say a prayer real quick. Lord, I just pray, Father, as the word is being preached this morning, Father God, that we have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the living God wants to share to us this morning, Father. I pray, Lord, we, we make it personal, Lord, because you want to have that personal relationship with us. I pray as the word is being preached, Father, God, there is a supernatural power that is released, Father, that brings forth healing, Father, restoration, Father, sets people free, Father. 
Lord, causes people to come to the knowledge of knowing Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, Father. And Lord, that it begin to penetrate the darkness that tries to sometimes come into our lives, Father. And we push it out, Father, right now with the light of your word, Father. And I pray, Lord, that as this word is being preached, people, Father, will be drawn closer to you. And they will hear from heaven as they just got a fresh download from you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen and amen. Well, guys, I'm super excited to take off with this series. Um, I, I just, I just uh, honestly, I didn't even know where to begin. I just had all this stuff in me, and I was like, where do I even start? And so I'm going to do what I felt like is the right thing to do, but also the, the God thing to do. I'm, I'm going to lay uh, some foundation, a lot of foundation. There'll be, it's going to take at least probably two parts for me to lay some foundation on some um, on where I'm really wanting to go, on, on what God really wants to build or deliver to each and every heart in this room. And so um, there might be some, some teaching and the preach may come out, but I'm here to tell you it's going to be good. So tell your neighbor it's going to be good. And tell your other neighbor I'm ready to receive. Now, um, I, I, I don't know how I, could, how I could say this, but I'm just super, I don't know, I'm just super excited to be able to, to share these things. So um, I hope you guys are just excited as I am. But I think as you hear it, you will be in Jesus' name. Amen. So let me take off. When I say on assignment, I want, I want some of you guys to know, know this in this room, and I believe this is, once again, just a, a foundation for where I'm going to go on so many different things. I want you to know what I mean on assignment. When I mean on assignment, I'm talking about walking in your God-given purpose, your God-given calling, uh, walking in uh, the plan that God has already prearranged, or you could say even preordained for your life. I'm talking about I'm walking in or I'm walking on assignment, the assignment that not man gave me, not, not, not what people gave me, not what my parents gave me. I'm talking about the assignment that God gave me. I'm talking about the very thing you were created to do, the very reason why you exist. The reason that you breathe, the reason you've been given life, the reason you've been blessed with so many things in your life, the reason you may even have some of the struggles and things that have come against you, I want you to know it's all to serve a purpose. It's to serve a purpose, and it's for a greater, it's for a greater cause beyond you. Can I get an amen? Ultimately, it's for the kingdom. It's, it's a divine assignment. It's a kingdom assignment. Come on, somebody. It's a spiritual assignment. Are y'all with me? And God has that assignment for every single individual in life and in this room. And tell your neighbor real quickly, say, say, I'm, I'm ready for my assignment. Amen. I know there are many of you in this room right now, you feel like you're on mission or in position. But there's other people say, I still need to know what the mission is before I can play the position. And I get that. And honestly, um, it, takes, it takes time. But ultimately, how many of you guys know most of that being revealed to us is not really determined by God because he preordained it, he preplanned it. A lot of that has to do with you. Tell your neighbor, it's to be determined by you. By you. But a lot of it has to be determined by you, and we're going to get into that as we dive deeper into this series. But what I need to let everybody know as a preface and as a foundation, that God has an assignment for your life. Tell your neighbor, God has an assignment for your life. Meaning everyone in this room has a God-given assignment. Every one of us have it. God would not put you on earth or in, 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 in whether it's the position or the place or, or where you may be. God did all those things for a purpose. You were born for a purpose. Tell your neighbor you were born for a purpose. <clears throat> Everyone has a God-given assignment. Parents, you have a God-given assignment. The Bible says that you're supposed to teach and train your children in the ways of the Lord. That's a God-given assignment. 
Can I get an amen? Young people, I know you may be in this room wondering, do I have an assignment? You have an assignment. God has called you to stand out and quit fitting in. Can I get an amen? So many young people get lost in the crowd because they want to be accepted. And how many of you guys know in order to be accepted, you have to become what they accept? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? When instead of becoming who God says you're supposed to be. And you need to know you are already accepted by Jesus. God will never reject you, but he's already accepted you. Matter of fact, the Bible says you are chosen. Why are you chosen? You're chosen because you were called for a specific assignment and a purpose. Can I get an amen? And so listen to me. You are on assignment. God has an assignment for you. Can I get an amen? I actually believe that young people, I believe when young people catch a fire and when they're radical for God, I believe that they they become some of the most greatest uh, difference makers you'll ever see. Because they'll run in and just say, you said go, I'll go. They don't even know what they're doing, but they're going to go. Well, we think about it as adults. We say, mm, should I go? When should I go? Should I do this now? We, we, we think, and they're already gone, leaving us in the dust. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Now, you may have to clean up a little of that mess, but at least they went. Can I get an amen? And at least it's for Jesus. Come on, somebody. Can I get an Amen. I'm going to even speak to the church. How many guys know the church has an assignment? What did Jesus tell us? That we're supposed to go. We're supposed to carry out the Great Commission. And we're supposed to share Jesus with the lost, the hurting, to every tribe, every nation, all across the world. That's the church's assignment. That's what we're called to do. We're called to be a part of fulfilling the Great Commission. God chose you. He put you on earth right now for such a time as this. So your life can make an impact. So your life can make an eternal impact. So your life can make a difference in this world. And how many guys know if you're not making a difference in this world, it's because the world is now making a difference in you. So I believe God gave me this message, this series to preach to the church, to help you guys understand that God has a spiritual, a specific assignment for you. And we are called to fulfill that assignment while we are on earth. Can I get an amen? How many of y'all know Rescue Church has an assignment? What is our assignment? To reach and rescue people with God's love. That is our assignment. That is the assignment that God has given us. That's why there shouldn't be multiple visions in the church. There's only one vision. Because when you have two visions, you have division. That's why God won't bypass the pastor. The head, can I get an amen? The under shepherd, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Come on, somebody. We're all supposed to be striving. We're all supposed to be moving. We're all supposed to be heading. We're all supposed to be trying to accomplish. We're all supposed to be living for the assignment God has given us. Can I get an amen? How many of you guys know that's why I'm preaching this morning? That's why I'm preaching today. Why are you preaching today? Because I'm on assignment. Can I get an amen? I'm preaching to you right because I'm on assignment. Why, why do you think, why do you think I've, I've gone through the things that I've gone through, the trials I've gone through, the ups and downs, you're dealing with people. People are crazy. I'm sorry. Tell your neighbor, uh, you ain't crazy. Yeah, they, if you sit next to a crazy person, you have my permission to go ahead and move. <clears throat> yeah, I ain't moving. Amen. And the truth is we all act a little crazy. You got to give me, a, turn me up on the keys just a little bit. How many guys know we all a little crazy? We all act a little crazy. But thank God for Jesus. Come on, so thank God for Jesus. Somebody go ahead and thank him right now. Thank God for Jesus. Some of y'all know you'd be in a loony bin right now if it wasn't for Jesus. Just be honest. Come on, somebody. Thank you. Some, some of y'all know you were on the crazy train. Come on. And thank God he delivered you and put you on the Jesus train. Come on. Can I get an Amen. Come on, thank you. If you're on the J train, the Jesus train, go ahead and thank him right now. Can I get an amen? That's why I do what I do. That's why I preach, because I'm on assignment. If it was Paul's will, it'd be something different. But it's not Paul's will be done, but it's thy will, God's will be done in my life. How many guys know even Jesus was on assignment? And we'll talk about that as we get closer to Easter. But Jesus himself was on assignment. 
Now, that means every person in this room, God has a specific assignment just for you. Can I get an amen? And I don't know about you, I don't want to miss out on my assignment. I don't want to miss out on my assignment. Watch this. Before I get any further, let me just read something to you to, to lay a little foundation here. And I'm, I'm going to go to the Apostle Paul because I always like to, I try my best sometimes to use a New Testament scripture. Um, and here we go. This is the Apostle Paul, Acts chapter 20, verse 24. And watch what the Apostle Paul says. He says, but my life is worth nothing to me. That, that is a powerful statement. He says, but my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for what? For finishing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others of the good news about the wonderful grace of God. Now, I'm going to say a couple things here and, and try not to sit on it too long because literally I could finish out the entire sermon just on this one scripture. There's so much in it. But the Apostle Paul says, my life is worth nothing to me. Nothing to me, meaning my life is totally unfulfilling and unsatisfying unless I use my life for the work God has assigned to me. Not just to start it, but to finish it. Not just to start it and get saved, but also to continue to work out my salvation so there's a sanctification process that works in my life so I can continue to move forward and advance into the purpose and the calling that God has for my life. Can I get an amen? I don't want to just exist. I want to fulfill a purpose. God's purpose for my life. I believe God has a specific assignment for everyone in this room. And biblically, I'm going to prove that to you in just a moment. But I believe it's important that we not only recognize or realize or get the revelation. We need that because if we don't, how many of you guys know we're going to continue to do the same old thing, getting the same old results, and continue coming up feeling unfulfilled and unsatisfied? going to the same mundane routine. Well, I've tried something different this year. It's 2024. You tried something different, but was it what God asked you to do? Oh, quiet. Thank you, brother. Or just something you thought might work. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Is it satisfying you? Is it fulfilling? Because if it isn't, it's probably not God. Now watch this, watch this. Let me, let me clear this up. I said, is it satisfying? Is it fulfilling? I didn't say it wouldn't be hard. This is hard. This is hard, Pastor. It can't be God. No, it probably is God. Because God's not going to ask you to do anything that doesn't require faith. God's not going to ask you to do anything that doesn't require you to get out of your comfort zone. Matter of fact, God's not going to require you to do anything that may cause other people to talk about you. Thank you, bro. Go ahead and do a little. Y'all got quiet up in this holy place. Why? Because when you begin to do things that aren't natural, y'all hear me? But are supernatural, people, you're always going to have a skeptic in the room. You're always going to have somebody that's going to question it. You're always going to have somebody say, mm, is that really God? But the key is not what they say, but what he said. So you need to make sure you hear his voice, not their voice. Can I get an amen? Nor the enemy or your flesh. And if he said you move forward in faith, can I get an amen? Somebody go ahead and clap right now. Most of us, when we're not walking in our God-given assignment, we're always going to feel empty on the inside, like something is missing. Meaning this, and I'm going to go there in this series. I'm going to go there, and I know I'm going to people who've been in church for a long time. Some of y'all go, hmm? You ever have a dog look, dog look at you, you do something weird, the dog kind of goes, hmm? Like sideways, like, what was that about? So people been in church, you know, for about one year, they're going to go, hey, amen. The one been here about 20 years, they're going to go, hmm? Because I'm speaking to you. Can I get an amen? Better yet, I'm going to say God is going to speak to you. It's going to speak to every chair in the room. This is something in here for everybody. Can I get an amen? <clears throat> and so that is, just so y'all know, my heart, speaking to your heart, I want you guys to know, that is my personal prayer, the same as the Apostle Paul. I, I truly do want to finish my God-given assignment while I am here on earth. I want to finish what I'm saying, the work God has assigned to me. 
A lot of people say, I, I, knew, I knew a man, he was nice. I knew a man, he was mean. I knew a man who was wealthy. I knew a man who, who was poor. But how many men or women do you know that could say, hey, they finished their God-given assignment? I can name one. His name was Don Major. Y'all go ahead and clap, man. Come on. I believe he's in heaven looking down going, go ahead, pastor, preach it. Amen. Amen. So many people make, they, they accomplish so many of the things, so many people striving for different types of accomplishment, different types of success. It's crazy how we have a world, a world, and I know it changes in different cultures. If, if you're in Texas, it's one thing. In California, it's another. In New York, it's another. You go to Canada, it's another. Even in different countries, all everywhere you go. But we're all striving for this type of success. But is it really success we should be striving for? Y'all ain't hearing me. Shouldn't we be striving for what God calls significant? Something that isn't just about you? More importantly, it's about Him and the assignment He's called you to do. Are y'all with me? Watch, I'm going to go there in a moment. I'm going to go a little deeper with that. But that is my prayer I want you to know. But here's what y'all have to know before I get to the subtitle of my, of my message today. I, I want you guys to know something. And this is highly important. You need to know that the enemy knows you have a God-given assignment, even if you don't believe it. I believe I have one. I know I have one. So there, there are many people who have a God-given assignment. Most of the time, the enemy will leave them alone because how many girls, they're not a threat to him. Everything's going great. Everything's going beautiful. Everything's just perfect. Everything's smooth. Everything's wonderful. Everything's great. Well, if everything's great, smooth, wonderful, I'm just wondering, what are you doing for the kingdom of God? Because when you do something for the kingdom of God, how many guys know there's always going to be an attack? Not on you, necessarily, but on your assignment. Did y'all catch that? See, when I walked into ministry, I came into ministry, uh, it was kind of like, during the charismatic times and everybody was all, all about Holy Ghost or all about word of faith. And what happened is everybody said, you know, if you were, you had a lot of faith, everything just went smooth. I don't know. I question that. I don't know. If I think if you have a lot of faith, I think it opens doors. Agreed. I believe it would do that for you. But really, ultimately, how many guys, the faith opened the door, but the grace is what got you there. But the truth is, if grace got you there, it's because grace already paid for it. Can I get an Amen. And so you have to realize sometimes that when you are on assignment, when you are on assignment, actually attacks will come. And I knew Christians that would get mad at that. Well, if I'm living for Jesus, then why are these attacks coming? You can get attacked whether you're living for them or not. But what I am saying is you're going to be attacked. But you got to realize when you're on assignment, there's a grace for that. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So if there's a grace for my, my, my assignment. That means I'm protected, I'm covered, and God will provide for whatever not my need may be. Can I get an Amen. But if you're doing it your way and you're not on his assignment, but your assignment, thank you, brother. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? You're on your assignment. There's going to be consequences to the choices you made. Grace will still cover you, but the challenges you face will be different. Can I get an amen? Amen. Those consequences, are y'all hearing me? Some of those, there's consequences that can lead you to prison. But there's other consequences that can get you to the palace. Or I should say, uh, there are choices that can get you to one or the other. It just depends on whether or not you're on assignment for yourself or you're on assignment for God. Watch, I'm going to go deeper. That's it. It's going to get clear. I promise you. I, I promise you, it's going to get so clear. So you got to remember, the enemy knows that you have a God-given assignment. And he will do everything and anything that he can to either tempt you or take you out. Why? Because he doesn't want you to walk in your God-given assignment. So if you're not walking with Jesus, how many guys know he can't lead you to your God-given assignment? So he's going to do everything he possibly can to keep you from walking with Jesus so you don't walk in your God-given assignment. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? He's going to do everything he possibly can to detour you, do everything he possibly can to keep you from walking in step with Jesus. 
And I'm going to say two things here. One, I'm going to say, when I, I've learned this. I've learned this. And this is just not in my notes. This is coming out. I've learned when you walk in step with Jesus, it will cause you to walk out of step with a lot of people. I'm still learning that. Can I get an amen? Y'all go ahead and clap. It is. It's going to cause you. Because your life is heading in a whole different direction. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Your life's heading in a whole different direction, but that's okay. I just need to make sure that I'm walking in step with God. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so the enemy's going to do everything he possibly can to either. He's either going to try to take you out or he's going to try to tempt you. But ultimately, how many guys know every temptation is to take you out? Did y'all hear what I just said? Every temptation should take you out. You're tempted. God, he will tempt you in so many ways. Sometimes he'll tempt you. You've been praying for a job. I need an open door, open door. He'll give you a job with big money, big pay. Everything looks wonderful and great. Oh, that's the Lord's blessing. How do you know that's the Lord's blessing? Because if it's pulling you away from Jesus, it isn't for God. I'm preaching. Can I get an amen? I know I'm on point right now. I know I'm on point. Tell, you, tell your neighbor, pastor's on point. And because there's a big paycheck, that comes with that promotion. You like the promotion, but you're going for the paycheck. You're not really going for Jesus. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So instead of being moved by the Spirit, you're being moved by money. I'm preaching right now. Can I get an amen? And really, if you were a mature Christian and knew your Bible, you don't live based off wages. Meaning you don't live based off a salary. You live based off seed. Can I get an amen? A lot of people, Chris criticize pastors because they say, oh, they're not supposed to have much. They're supposed to be poor, busted, and disgusted. Where is that at in the Bible, by the way? Show me where that is at. I don't see that. Everything Jesus had, he was ta- he, anything he needed, it was taken care of. Can I get an amen? He needed money. He just pulled a fish out the water. Money fall out. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? That was Jesus. So when a pastor gets uh, something successful happens in his life, people always criticize him. wonder where he got that money. must have been slipped underneath the table. Y'all know what I mean? I don't know what you mean. So they want to know what we make. They want to know my salary. Really what I want to know is, why do you want to know what my salary is? Don't you want to know how big I sow a seed? See, I get what I get because I've sown the big seed. You don't want to know about the big seed. You just want to know about the salary. But before you know the salary, I'm going to tell you the seed that I sowed to get what I got. Can I get an amen? Come on, somebody. And I know it works for my life because I'm on assignment, and the enemy is going to do everything he possibly can to tempt me or to take me out. But I know this. I've got God's grace. i got his favor. And I got his blessing upon my life. Can I get an amen? So I don't fear those things. I continue to walk in faith is what I'm trying to say. Tell your neighbor, you got to continue to walk in faith. Why wouldn't you? If grace is big enough to get you saved, it's big enough to get you out of any other mess you're in. Can I get an amen? Somebody say God's grace is big enough. And tell your other neighbor, devil is a liar. And can I just ask you something? I'm talking to adults. I get it when teenagers and when younger kids don't understand this because honestly, the truth is they just haven't lived life long enough. They think they know, but they don't know. And I've been one before. I've been there, spent the night. I can't say I didn't do that too. So don't, don't, don't talk bad about your teenagers because they don't get it. Can I get an amen? But I want to speak to the adults in the room, and I want you to realize something. And this is love, and I mean this truly with love. Um, why would we want to chase anything other than Jesus? I'm just going to get to the point. I tell your neighbor, he's not candy coating it. Why would you want to chase fortune and fame? It ain't for God. Quiet up in this holy house. If you're chasing fortune and fame, it ain't for God. Yeah, it is. I want to be rich so I can be a blessing. Let me check your tithe record. Let me check your giveaway. Because if you can't sell off 100, what makes you think you're going to sell off 1,000? <clears throat> Tell you never, Pastor, I go candy coat it. But it's going to be good. Come on. That's a, oh, I want to go somewhere else with this, but I, I just need to reel it back in because I want to go somewhere else with that, but I'm not. I'm not. Unless the Lord just tells me to go for it, I'm going to go for it. I, I don't want to chase after fortune and fame. I don't want to chase those things because I know I, I've met, I, I've had it. My, I've been there, spent the night. My dad was at the third largest company in all of Houston. 
the largest, the third largest of all of janitorial company and the largest in Houston. I know what it's like to be wealthy. I know what it's like to be poor. I know what it's like to live on rice and beans. I know what it's like to just have to. I know all those. I've been there, spent the night, seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. But I'm here to tell you that I've never seen God forsake the righteous. Never. God comes through time and time again. He will provide. He will make a way. He will move in your life. He will do things for you that people will just ignore. But God says, I've got my eye on you like i got my eye on the sparrow. I will watch over you. I will guard you. I will protect you. I will be your defender when you're in need. And I will be your provider when you're in need. Can I get an amen? So why would I chase anything other than God, other than Jesus? Because the Bible says, if I seek ye the kingdom of heaven first, all these things shall be added into my life. Matter of fact, my faith is at a level to where I'm not chasing after things. Those things are chasing after me. When's the last time you told somebody that a blessing almost knocked me over? I'm being serious. What happened to that kind of talk? What happened to that kind of Christian lingo? Man, when is the last time that somebody's walked up to you and blessed you big? When is the last time you stepped into something and, well, I didn't see this coming, but I got blessed beyond measure? I want blessings to chase me down. I don't want to chase after them. If I do, I got it out of order. Can I get an amen? Why do you say that, Pastor? I say this. I say it for this reason. Because that's exactly what the enemy's trying to do in the church. The enemy is trying to get us out of alignment with God. Because when you're out of alignment with God, you will miss out on your assignment from God. Did y'all catch that? That is powerful. If you're out of alignment with God, you're going to miss out on your assignment from God. So the enemy wants you out of alignment so you can't walk in your assignment. Tell your neighbor, he's preaching. Can I get an amen? So this morning, I'm going to speak to you on the subject of created for a higher purpose. Tell your neighbor, you were created for a higher purpose. You're created for a higher purpose. And I may not get done with this, but that's okay. We got a whole series, so we can just we can just tag where we left off. Can I get an amen? One more time, tell your neighbor you were created for a higher purpose. Whew, man, I'm just asking the Holy Ghost what direction I need to go with this. I need I need to. Can y'all love me a little bit, man? I need to feel a little more at the keys, Mary Beth, just a little bit. Amen. Thank you. How many guys know there's something in music that creates things in the atmosphere? Can I get an amen? And I don't want to be led by my flesh. I want to be led by the Spirit. I want to know it's God. So one more time, tell your neighbor you were created for a higher purpose. <clears throat> Meaning you were not created by God to live an average or unrewarding life. Amen. So many people want to settle for average when God's never called you to be average. You want to settle for where I am. No, God wants to take you to the next level. A lot of us need to get God's vision for our life, not our vision for our life, because your vision will head you down the wrong path. God's vision will always take you forward and upward. Can I get an amen? That's the way he designed you. It's what he created for you. He wants you to fulfill or have a satisfaction or fulfilling in your life, knowing that you're doing something that's beyond you. And so you were created by God to live for a higher purpose. Meaning there's a bigger picture that God has created you to be a part of. God created you to serve a purpose. Listen to me, higher. Love me on this. God created you to serve a purpose higher than yourself. Mm. Higher than your personal achievements. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? To serve a purpose higher than even the job that you're in. A way higher purpose. A way higher purpose. Higher than any anything you can say you succeeded in. Whatever those accomplishments may be, God has called you to serve a higher purpose. God has created you to serve a higher purpose. Meaning God has created you to be about the Father's business, not just your business. 
Can I get an amen? God wants your life not just to be successful, though he wants that for you. He wants your life to be significant. I told you I'd get there. Meaning it's not whether or not you got the top, it's how many people you got to come with you. How many people did you help? How many people did you help not only get where you're at to move, go further than where you were at? That's why we have people in this church that know that when that building goes up, that isn't just for us. Come on, that's for the next generation, but we need to do it now before it comes next. Can I get an amen? We're gonna do everything we possibly can to help them go further than we ever have gone before. Can I get an amen? If your heart isn't in that, what good is your success if you can't be significant? Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. What good is it if you have a big bank account, but you have nothing in your heavenly account? Can I preach this morning? Can I get an amen? What good does it do if you get the house, you get the car, you get the, you get the spouse, you even get the dog that comes with it? And if you're crazy, you got a cat. Sorry, Mary Beth. She a little crazy, just so y'all know. Anyway, amen. What good does it do if you have all that, but you do nothing for God? You do nothing to help other people succeed. You need to do nothing to help the next generation walk in what you wish you could have walked in. I'm preaching right now. Can I get an amen? The purpose for your assignment is not just so your life will elevate. The purpose for your assignment is so God's will be done on earth. Can I get an amen? Jesus did not live his life for himself. He lived his life for others. And in a society where everything is about self or selfies, Everything is about me, myself, and I, and we're constantly doing it from the minute we get out of bed and bef- until the, till we, st- we get back into bed to go to sleep. It is so hard for us to get our attention off of me, myself, and I. When the reality is you're going to keep feeling empty inside because you're going to live a life that you wish you had instead of living the life God said you can't have. Pastor, is that really true? Look at the filters on that picture. That ain't you, baby. That ain't you. Can I get it? Just ain't you. I'm sorry. Just ain't you. Why live a life that you pretend to be when you can live a life that God said you can be? I want to be who God created me to be, not who others want me to be. I don't want to live my life trying to get the approval from man or even crowds or people. I want to live my life knowing that it's pleasing to God. Can I get an amen? That's where I want to be in life. Tell your neighbor, that's where I want to be in life. Meaning I'm going to live for a higher purpose. Not my purpose, but I'm going to live for a higher purpose because I was created for a higher purpose. Tell your neighbor, you were created for a higher purpose. You got to dream bigger. Tell your neighbor, you got to dream bigger. You got to dream bigger. You got to dream. You ain't dreaming big enough. Dream, dream big. I mean, God had a big dream. His dream was so big that he said, for God so loved the world, not just two people, not just five people, for he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believed in him would not perish but have whatever lasting life. Tell your neighbor, you got to get a bigger vision for your life. Tell your other neighbor, dream bigger. Dream bigger. Many times we're not dreaming bigger because they're your dreams, not God dreams. God dreams are always going to be on your, going to seem like they're beyond your reach. Did y'all hear what I just said? God dreams are always going to seem like they're beyond your reach. When I said we were going to bid this, uh, this uh, building over here, trust me, I knew the criticism would come. I knew the naysayers would come, but I also knew there would be a crowd of people who would be behind us. Can I get an Amen. But I didn't do it to, 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 to find approval from them. I did it to please God. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? When you really live on assignment, when you really fulfill assignments that God has given you, listen, there is a main assignment, but there's going to be other assignments that come with the assignment. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? 
And when you live on assignment, listen to me, people are always going to understand because it's not natural. I could even say it this way that will help the younger people understand. Matter of fact, it's going to be different. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? It's different. It's different. Why? Because it's not what business analysts would tell you to do. You're doing something that, isn't, that defies what business people will say. You're doing what God said. Why? And I can do it. Why can you do that, Pastor? Doesn't that seem unwise? No, it's wise because I'm not doing it based on man's economy or the world's economy. I do it based on God's economy. I I love, I love, these are some quotes on purpose. And I just think they're, they're just powerful. I just, I just want them to speak. And I think I put three of them in there because I want one of them to hit somebody in this room upside the head and just love on them. Watch. First, first quote. Go ahead. <clears throat> Life is about letting God use you for his purpose, not about using him for your own purpose. That's powerful. Let that sink in. It preaches all by itself. All by itself. I think some of y'all right now, you're getting back in alignment with God. That's my prayer for this foundational teaching is that we would just get back in alignment with our maker, with our father, with our creator. Because if you're not in alignment, you'll never walk in your assignment. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Next quote. The greatest tragedy is not death, but life without purpose. How many dreams are unfulfilled in a graveyard? How many people are in the graveyard and and never, never did anything, never made a difference? I don't know about you. I don't fear death. I don't fear death at all, but I know this. When I do die, I know where I'm going. That's why I don't fear it. Can I get an amen? But I know this. When I stand before my maker, I want him to say, well done, good and faithful servant. We aren't just thrown on this earth like dice tossed across the table. We are lovingly placed here by God for a higher purpose. Lovingly placed here by God. I'm going to prove this to you. I'm going to show you this like you've never seen it before. It's going to cause some of y'all to go, but it's going to bless you. I promise you. Tell your neighbor you were created for a higher purpose. So number one is this. You were created, <clears throat> excuse me, and set apart for a higher purpose, not just to exist. Let me say it again. You were created and set apart for a higher purpose, not just to exist. Listen to me. You don't live, breathe, and have the life that you have just to occupy space. You're not here just to burn up time. Oh, my time goes, my time comes. It's going to come for everybody, so whenever it comes, it just comes. But what are you doing with the time that God has given you? Because to be honest with you, if you don't know it, I want you to know this time is a gift. The time that you've been given is a gift. I promise you, I've done a lot of funerals, and I've been, to, I've been in hospitals where people are about to die. I've been in rooms where people are about to die. And I promise you, nobody that's about to die just says, well, it's my time. No, they usually want to say, hey, I want to get this right before I leave. Why? Because they realize when you go, you're getting close to to that time or when you're on your deathbed, you realize how precious time is. Why do we got to wait till we're about to die to realize that? I'm preaching right now. I know it's tough love, but it's going to wake some of y'all up. Tell your neighbor, I receive. Time's a gift. Time's a gift. It's crazy how many people say, well, you know, I'm just always doing this and I'm always doing that. And I don't even know if I have time for this. And I don't have time for that. I don't have time for this. You have time. Listen to me. The time that you have is the time that you made for yourself. You're in charge of your own schedule. I'm going to say it again. You're in charge of your own schedule. Don't get mad at other people because you don't know how to manage your schedule. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? You don't have time for those things because you haven't made time for those things. You need to put it on your schedule so you have time for those things. Can I get an amen? That's a whole nother message, but I'm just going to go there for a moment. If Jesus really is the priority of your life, that means he should be at the top of your schedule. Lord, I don't, I don't have time for you. Do you really you just think what you just told the maker, the creator, that you don't have time for him? We ought to have time for him every single day of our life. Can I get an amen? Matter of fact, you got to get to the place where God can interrupt your schedule. I'm preaching right now. Moses is just trying to make time for Jesus. Well, what if Jesus wants to interrupt your schedule? Are you going to say no? No, I'm going to say yes. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? You can interrupt my schedule. Because how many of you guys know what God has for me is going to be so much better than what I want to make use of my time for. What he wants to make use of my time for is always better. Can I get an amen? 
Are y'all with me? Somebody say, I hear you, Pastor. So you're not here just to exist or to occupy space. God has a plan and a purpose for your life on earth. Somebody say earth. It's not just to make heaven, but what are you going to do while you're on earth before you go to heaven? If you're a Christian in the room. God has you has a destiny for you to walk in and he has an assignment for your life. Before you were born, before you were born, God had a plan and a purpose for your life. I'm going to show you something. This is some of y'all know in the room. This is where God tells Jeremiah this. He says before you were born. Before you were even born. Some of us just read through this so quickly. We don't realize how how powerful, how profound it is powerful. It is, it is so powerful. And this, this is what he tells Jeremiah. Watch this. He says this. He says, he says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Excuse me. Now, now we're not going to get done with everything, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to take my time on this because it's, it's too good. It's too good. How many of you guys know you, there's just some things you can't cook fast? Amen. You, you, and sometimes when even when you eat it, you gotta eat it slow to savor the flavor. Can I get an amen? Tell your neighbor, I'm I'm going to savor the flavor. <clears throat> Meaning, I'm gonna break this down for you. Jeremiah one five one verse. He says, "I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb." I'm gonna pause there right at the period for a moment. You gotta understand the word "knew." He said "knew knew." The word "knew" there means to know by experience. It means to know by experience meaning this that God knew you not not just to know by his infinite knowledge he didn't know just by knowledge by his infinite knowledge because how many guys know God has infinite knowledge but God knew you it means to know by experience that means watch this this is so powerful powerful he says I knew you I knew you he's Jeremiah guess what I knew you before before I even formed you in your mother's womb, meaning I experienced you, <laughs> meaning I knew you before I formed you. Form there means that he's, a, he's about to give him a body. Before I form you in the womb, before I give you the body, I knew you before you got that body, meaning you existed or God experienced you. He knew you before you, were, you even came into time. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Meaning before you even hit your mother's womb, before, before you even got there and I begin to do the forming there, no, your parents might have met. There might have been something that was done there in the natural, but you got to understand you being formed was done by me. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I formed you. When I formed you, I equipped you with everything you needed for your assignment because we're going to read that in a moment. That's where he goes next. He says, so I knew you. I knew you outside of time. Are y'all with me? Meaning before you even were in your mother's womb on earth, before I even formed you, before you entered into the earth realm, the earth dimension, I knew you in a heavenly dimension. See, I'm already starting to get the little looks coming at me. How many guys know that God knew you? He knew you even before you even entered into time. How many of you guys know this dimension that we're in on earth? How many of you guys know that is the, the realm? That is a realm where time exists, where God created time. God lives outside of time because he created time. In heaven, there is no time. It's eternity. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Let me teach. Can I t tell your neighbor? He's going to teach a little bit. So that means you were before you became are y'all hearing what I'm saying? You were, is what I should say, before you were even born or formed. You were, you were. God knew you. He, he knew you by experience, meaning you, you came from a heavenly realm into an earthly realm. You came from outside of time into time, and then he formed you in your mother's womb, meaning he molded you and he made you into who you were supposed to be. That wasn't done by your parents. That was done by God. Even before you're born, God's already forming, already molding, already working things out, already putting things inside of you. How many guys know when he formed you, he's, he's, and, and he's doing that, he's not only molding you, how many guys knows, but he's putting potential inside of you. 
the forming is to bring out the God potential that God is purpose for you to have. The potential is for his purpose. She says, before I knew you, before you were born, I set you. Watch what he says next. Get back here. He says, I knew you. Let me back up. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Is that on the screen? Yeah, if you leave that, that'll help me flow. Y'all leave it on the screen. One other thing I want to point out before I move on, because I know this is all I'm going to have time for. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. I'm going to stop at the pier one day. How many guys know that means that there's nobody here by accident? Can I get an amen? Nobody here by accident. Yeah, but, you know, you don't know how I got here. and It wasn't pretty. That doesn't matter. God doesn't make mistakes. You're here because God purposed you to be here. Can I get an amen? If God didn't want you to be here, you wouldn't be here. And I'm going to throw something out there real quick, and I know it sounds political, but listen to me. It's not. It's biblical. I'm not shooting politics from the pulpit. I'm, I'm shooting Bible from the pulpit. Can I get an amen? If God formed you in the womb, then no man has the right to abort what God has formed. I'm preaching right now. I'm saying it right now. That's why every creature should be pro-life. I'm saying it. You bet I'm saying it from right here. You can get mad all you want, but you listen, you take it up with God. Don't take it up with me. Can I get an Amen. He formed you. No man has the right to abort what God has formed. Can I get a name? What God has created. Who gave you that right? You didn't give it life. He says he knew you even before you were born. He's the creator of life. And so what does God do? He brings you in. You come into your mother's womb. And I'm just going to go ahead and say this now because I, I'll, I'll probably repeat it later. But I want you to know something. That means that you were, you were formed in your mother's womb. And how many of you guys know, boop, you come out, you're a baby. Tell your neighbor, I was a cute baby. <clears throat> but you came out for a reason. You came out for a purpose. You came out for a God-given purpose. Can I get an amen? A God-given assignment. That's what he's about to tell Jeremiah. So what happens is now you're on earth. You're on earth. Now you're in the dimension or the realm of time. And how many of you guys know that's why everybody in this room has a lifespan? So now you have a, a lifespan. You're here in time. And during that lifespan, how many of you guys know there's already another appointment, appointment for you? And how many of you guys know that's called death? It's appointed unto every man to what? Live and die. And how many guys know when we die, it says that we're no longer just in this realm, but it's to be in the presence of the Lord. It's appointed to every man to die once, is what the scripture says. It's appointed unto man for every man to die once. Meaning, listen to me, while you're on this lifespan, there's always another appointment for you, to, for you and it's called death. And so that's why you don't need to fear death because when you die, how many guys know you go right back to where you came from? If you know Jesus, <laughs> can I get an amen? Why? Because when you enter into this realm, when you enter into this realm, how many guys know the law, the law in this realm, which how many guys know the law of sin and death, how many guys know it comes on every person? And so Jesus said, I, God said, I love my people so much. Listen to me, I'm going to bring them into, into the time realm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send my son Jesus so that way everybody can be set free from that. So that way the enemy will have no legal rights on your life. That's why I said, oh, death, where is thy sting? Meaning death, you have no legal rights. You can't touch me because I'm perfect. I'm sinless. The first Adam sinned, but the second Adam, come on, somebody, made a way where there didn't seem to be a way, and he delivered us from the law of sin and death. Can I get an amen? So when you die, if you know Jesus, can I get an amen? His blood now covers you, washes you, and cleanses you. And so now you go back from where you came from. I'm getting ahead of myself, but I just had to throw that out there because I know I got some people out there looking at me going, Rrr. I just want you to know that that's the way it works. That's God's word. That's, that's not my opinion. That's God's word. Can I get an amen? amen? So that's powerful. So he tells them that. This is so good. So nobody's here by accident. It doesn't matter if your parents planned you or not. God did. Can I get an amen? amen. I, don't, I don't care. I don't care. What they didn't plan. It doesn't matter. God did. You're here because God wants you to be here. Can I get an amen? amen. He wanted you to be born. He wanted you to be created for a purpose. Amen. So watch this. Then he says, before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you to be my prophet 
to the nations. Now let me just get this part on set apart and I'll have to close. He says, before you were born, I set you apart. How many guys know he preordained it? He he preplanned it. Listen to me, people, before you were ever born, God already had a preordained plan for your life. Meaning he already had an assignment for your life before you even hit your mother's womb. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? He already had it for you. But he says, I I set you apart. Matter of fact, in the King James, it uses the word sanctification. Sanctification doesn't mean just mean to make holy, though Jesus does that for you. It also means to, to set you apart or other is what it means. That's why in, in the NLT translations, it says, I set you apart. Tell your neighbor you're set apart. For what? A higher purpose. Tell your neighbor you're set apart for a higher purpose. You're set apart for a higher purpose. What does set apart means? It means this. It means to designate or to separate someone for, uh, or something for a special or higher purpose. It's on the screen. To designate or to separate someone or something for a special or higher purpose. That's powerful right there. Meaning God, how many guys know that God set you apart to be a light in a dark world? God set you apart to be, watch this, to be an original, not a copycat. To be an original. There'll never be another one just like you. God, when he creates you, how many guys know when he forms you in the womb, there's never another one like you. There can be an identical twin, but how many guys know the fingerprints are going to be different? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? He formed you on purpose, for a purpose, to live on earth on assignment for him. You did not bring yourself here. Your parents did not bring yourself here. You can think what you want, and I know that there are people out there that will argue about how creation and all these things happen. Go ahead and argue away, but I promise you will not come up with a better answer than the word. Who who is going to believe that all these things have to come together for a big bang to happen? You have more faith. Listen, it takes more faith to believe in the big bang than to believe in God's word. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? The enemy is doing everything he can to get you out of alignment with God's word, out of alignment, so you'll miss out on the assignment. God has purposed you to walk in here on earth. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So I'm set apart. Tell your neighbor you're set apart. I'm set apart. I'm set apart to be who God created me to be, not who others want me to be, not even who I pretend to be. Did you hear what I just said? He set you apart to be the church. You hear what I'm saying? To be the church. Tell your neighbor to be the church. What happened to that? To be the church. To be the church. Everybody wants to be a celebrity, but nobody just wants to be the church. What happened to just being the church? To be in the church. And while you're in this life, in that lifespan, that lifespan is experienced two ways. It's experienced by seasons, and it's experienced by levels. There's seasons and there are levels. God wants to take us from faith to faith to what? Glory to glory. How many guys know those are levels? But there are seasons for certain things. There's a time and season for everything, as the Scripture says. Can I get an amen? amen. But to be the church... It's all year round. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. To be the church is all year round. All year round. We're, we're called to be the church. But yet, the church criticizes the church. Go ahead, bro. Play it, man. Let him know. Let, let me wake him up for a little bit. I know, I know you used to pay pastor. End on a positive note. I am. Why do we speak negative over something Jesus gave his life for. Which is the church is not the building, the church is the people, the body of Christ. Can I get an amen? And if everybody in the church has a God-given assignment, matter of fact, we all have at least one common assignment, that is to be the church. Can I get an amen? And fulfill the great commission. Why wouldn't we do everything we possibly can to help everybody walk in what they were called or assigned to do instead of trying to trip each other up? Just because one gets there quicker than you, don't get your eyes on where they're going. Get your eyes on where God wants to take you. Can I get an amen? It isn't always about how fast we get there. The key is, are you going to get there? They got there already. They got their blessing. They're already doing this. So what? Where are you at today? You could be delaying. Come on, somebody. Where God wants to lead you or take you simply because you get your eyes on the wrong thing. Tell you never get your eyes back on Jesus. 
and then he'll lead you to your assignment. Can I get an amen? Why? Because I'm set apart. I'm set apart. I'm set apart to be more like him and less like the world, to make a difference. Come on, somebody. I'm called to be a difference maker. I'm called to, called to be a, a world changer. I'm called to be a kingdom builder. Can I get an amen? And I'm going to read number two and close this out because I'm out of time. Number two is this. When you read the manuscript for your life, how many guys know this is our manuscript? Your higher purpose will be discovered. Your higher purpose will be discovered. The author of life is the only one who knows your assignment. The one who created you knows what he has assigned, what he has purposed, what he has called, what he has created you to do here on earth. He's the only one. So here's what I want to close with because I'm out of time and I'll, I'll pick up here. I want to close with this. Real quick, I tell your neighbor, I'm created for a higher purpose. You're created for a higher purpose. Here is where I want to close. Listen to me. He created Jeremiah for a higher purpose. He was called to be a prophet. Not everybody in the church is called to be a prophet. Not everybody's called to be a pastor. Not everybody's called to even be in the ministry. But there are, everybody is called to be a, in ministry in whatever God has called you to do. So we need Christian teachers. We need Christian attorneys. Can I get an amen? We need Christian doctors. I don't know what, what vocation or what career God has called you to, but with every career, there's a calling. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. And often the very thing that you are doing as far as a career, as a career, you got to remember that is a career. That is something you're doing to either help a business or help another man, or you're working for that. Listen to me. The Bible says we don't work for our employer or work in it, but we work as if we are serving the Lord. So God many times will give you the job or the thing that you're doing or that, that career so that way you can not only pay for, but you can operate in what you're called to do. Can I get an amen? And not everybody is called to the same thing, but the key is, are you going to live your life where it's constantly, it's constantly unsatisfying, it's constantly unfulfilling to where I just feel like I'm going through the routine, I'm going through the motions time and time again, and all of a sudden, how many guys know then this passion? There's no passion in your life. Everything seems like it's kindling. I feel like I'm just going through the same old routine, just waiting to die. Why are you waiting to die when God says he wants you to live while you're still on earth? And we're, and we're kicking back, man. And we're just saying, oh, that's just the way it is. That's just the way the world is. Everything's changed, Pastor. Everything, we just need to go ahead and embrace it. No, I ain't embracing what the world says, but I will embrace what God says. I'm not here. I'm not here to fit in like the world. I'm here to stand out. People may talk about me. People may say things about me, but all I know is my life is pleasing to the Lord. And if Jeremiah can fulfill what he is called to do, the apostle Paul can fulfill what he is called to do, I'm going to finish and fulfill what God has called me to do. I will not lay back, hold back, get my eyes off on the one who saved me, rescued me, and set me free. you got to be kidding me. My God has been too good to me for me to go back to my old life and my old way of living. And so there are many in this room, many times we don't walk in what we're called to do because we feel unworthy. We feel like I ain't worthy, I'm not valuable, I'm, I'm no good, I've, I've made too many mistakes. You, you don't know what I grew up in. I, I grew up in, in craziness. I, I, I just, Pastor, I, I can't even talk about some of the things that I've done or experience I went through. I don't need to know your past, I don't. And to be truthful, God doesn't either, even though he knows it. It didn't catch him off guard. He didn't go, ooh, man, just didn't your parents, everybody just messed up. Too bad, too sad. No, no, he didn't do that. He said, you know what? I love you so much. You're worthy. You're so valuable. Then I'm going to send my son down there. I love you so much, so much. I'm going to send my son down there, and he's going to lay his life down. Something nobody else can do. I, I said, you are the apple of my eye. You are my masterpiece. Matter of fact, I didn't send you to the earth to feel unworthy and, and feel like you can't do nothing good for anybody or, or even me. No, 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 no. I want you to know I love you so much that I, I, I'm going to make you feel worthy if you'll just receive the love. The love. Many times we feel unworthy because we're not 
experience the love God has for us. The more loved I am by God, the more I experience that love for me, the more I begin to realize how valuable and worthy I am to Him. And the more loved I am by Him, the more I not only love Him back, but the better I love others. Church, you, you really want a better world? Do you really want a better world? Do you want a better marriage? Do you want better finances? Do you really want to see God move mightily? Do you really want to see revival? Do you really want to see your loved ones who don't know Jesus come to the Lord? Do you really want to see your kids get on fire for God? Do you really want to see all that? Listen to me, the world gets better when Christians live better lives for Jesus. That's how it happens. Wanting a miracle, wanting revival to cause those things to put your life in motion. No, you choose. You choose. God already chose for us. He said it's paid for in full and finished at the cross. Now, will you just receive what my grace gave you, my love for you, and watch what I can do through you? Loyalty cannot, let me say it this way, loyalty necessarily can't be taught. Loyalty comes from love. The more you love him, the more loyal you'll be to him. And if you're loyal to him because you love him, then you'll be faithful. Can I get an amen? Tell your neighbor, I received this morning. Can I get an amen? I received this morning. Y'all come on out. If you're in here right now, you say, Pastor, I feel like I've drifted in my relationship with God. I want to be able to hear his voice. I want to know what my God-given assignment is. I don't want to just feel like I'm just, just occupying space where I just exist. I want to know what I'm created to do. I want to know. I want to know what that is, Pastor. I want to know. I want to know. I want to live for God. I want to keep Him the priority of my life. If you're backslidden in this room or you've never given your life to Christ, this is your moment. This is your time. I want to pray for you right now. If that's you in the room, just go ahead and lift your hand up high. If that's you right now, let me pray for you. Lift your hand up high. If that's you in this room, I see your hands. I see your hands. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. hand. Y'all can lower your hands. Now, church, I'm going to ask everyone in this room to repeat after me as I lead them in this prayer. Everyone say, Dear Lord, today I receive your love, your grace, and your forgiveness. Lord, come into my life. Make me new and help me to live for you every day in every way. Lord, I believe I'm heaven bound in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all give God a hand. Come on, somebody. Y'all give him a hand. Give him a hand.